Welcome to God's Word Fellowship. I'm Gerald Santiago and we are studying about desire, a key ingredient of prayer. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for your wonderful, marvelous love for us. Father, we thank you for your great love for us. Father, you are our only true God. Father, you are the maker of heaven and earth. And Father, we pray you teach us your word. Father, we pray you teach us to pray. Father, we pray you grant us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and revelation in your word, your will, and your love. Father, we pray you grant us as ideas, concepts and insights. Father, we pray you show us great and mighty things that we do not know. Father, we pray you show us wonderful things out of your word. Father, we pray you grant us word in due season. Father, we pray you grant us answers and solutions. Father, we pray you stretch out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. Father, we thank you so much you heard and answered our prayers. Father, we pray for our nation India, for our states, our cities and our local areas. Father, you are rich in love, great in love, mighty in love. Father, you are love. Father, you are great in mercy, full of compassion and rich in mercy. Father, we pray that you stretch out your mighty hand according to your love, according to your great mercy and bring about a marvelous deliverance from the coronavirus. Father, we thank you so much for your glorious deliverance. Father, we pray the coronavirus be destroyed totally and completely. Father, we thank you so much for your great help for us. Father, our help comes from you who made heaven and earth. Father, we set our eyes upon you and Father, we thank you for your mighty deliverance. Father, by the authority of your word, in the name of Jesus, coronavirus, die and be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, we bind the works of the devil behind the coronavirus. In the name of Jesus, let every scheme, every plan, every device every weapon behind the coronavirus be broken and destroyed father we thank you so much for your marvelous marvelous help for us father we pray that you restore people who are already afflicted uh, by the coronavirus back to health father we pray that they be totally and completely healed father we thank you for your great help for us father you are so good so great and so awesome father we thank you you heard and answered our prayers father we pray Pray for your blessing and peace upon our nation. Let life come back to normal in our country. Father, you are so good, so great, and so awesome. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Uh, let's go to our text today. I encourage you to continue to pray for our nation. It's so important that we do not uh, stop praying since we got some relief. We need to stay in this place of prayer and faith until the coronavirus is totally and completely destroyed. And um, you know, things are back to normal. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory be to God. Blessed be His holy name. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let's go to Mark chapter 11 and read verse 24. That would be our text. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Notice the connection between desire and prayer. Our prayer in one way, in you know, one definition of prayer is that a prayer is an expression of our desire. Right? It's an expression of our desire. Prayer is the place where we give voice to our desire before God. We let Him know what we desire. We ask Him to fulfill our desire. Without desire, you don't have um, good prayers. You know, sometimes in the Christian circles, they say you should kill desires. You should not have any desires. Um, not all desires are bad. God designed man to have desires. So really you cannot do away with the desires. Right? You, every man will have a desire at any given point of time in his life. Now what we want to do is make a distinction between good desires and evil desires. Good desires should be nurtured, cultivated, 
right good desires should be expressed in our prayers evil desires should be put to death you understand this yeah let's look at some more scriptures go with me to colossians colossians hallelujah to jesus chapter 1 notice here paul has a desire right look at his desire verse 9 for this cause we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you and to desire notice paul desired something for his congregation so he watched that desire he prayed that his desire would be fulfilled what was paul's desire that e meaning the believers uh, in this particular letter the colossians now this is a great prayer you should be praying this for yourself every day and it will bless your life immeasurably uh, desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you might walk worthy of the lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work increasing in the knowledge of god notice that paul wanted the people of colossians to be filled with the knowledge of god's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding he wanted them to walk worthy of the calling that god has called them with he wanted them to be pleasing to god he desired that they will be fruitful in every good work he wanted them to increase in the knowledge of god these are all good desires do you want to put these desires to death of course not <laughs> right we want these desires you know th- these are the kind of desires that we should have hallelujah to jesus and notice another desire strengthened with all might strength he, he wanted strong believers right strengthened with all might according to his glorious power and to all patience and long suffering with joyfulness he wanted strong people right who can endure afflictions and keep moving on the right track right right track in the path that god has chosen for them with joy right he wanted them to be people who are patient and not, not not people who you know who give up in two days <laughs> no he wanted people who who are strong who endure he who keep moving forward marching ahead like him <laughs> you know that's what paul did right he just kept moving forward no matter what <laughs> they put him in jail shut him in prison and still he was moving forward right <laughs> you know <laughs> what he did during the during his time in prison has been made uh, holy scripture for us right <laughs> these are letters that he wrote while he was in prison many of the letters that he has written that are in the the epistles uh or letters that he wrote to the churches when he was in prison notice even when he was in prison the word of god was not changed he could not be stopped the people that he, they they brought him to a stand still no but actually he was still moving forward <laughs> and the church was still moving forward hallelujah to jesus our god is a great god hallelujah to jesus so notice desires are good right desires by themselves are not evil we christians need to discern between good desires and evil desires right that, that we spoke about that in detail already and then we also spoke about the right way to get the desire is you know desires are good you know for example last week we we spoke about desiring to be rich is not necessarily evil because the blessing of god makes you rich right god richly gives you all things to enjoy wanting to enjoy good things is not evil but how you go about it how you pursue it is a problem see if you are hasty to become rich the bible says you you will fall into serious problems right if you are pursuing money it is a problem instead of pursuing god if money becomes your uh, uh, no god that that is a problem right but if you are a person who loves god right you are seeking god you are following god's will you are serving god 
you know god wants to bless you god wants to bless you with riches and wealth the bible is very very plain about that you understand that we spoke about how the difference between jacob and esau we looked at the life of esau right i mean jacob we saw how to begin with he was trying to get the blessing in crooked ways which was wrong right but then later on god met with him and he learned the right way to obtain the blessing right he walked by faith he trusted god he looked to god he worked hard right and he increased greatly let's look at a scripture go with me to um genesis and genesis chapter 30 genesis chapter 30 yeah let's look at the last verse 43 notice the result of um, jacob trusting god and working hard what happened the man increased exceedingly and had much cattle and maid servants and men servants and camels and asses Now notice the impact of the blessing in the life of Abraham go with me to Genesis chapter 24 Genesis chapter 24 verse 35 And the Lord has blessed my master greatly say greatly and here he is talking about the impact of it materially if you know because if you read the remaining part of his uh, statement you would see that here in this particular place he is focusing on material blessing right and the lord has blessed my master greatly and he has become great materially right and he has given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses right and sarah my master's wife bare a son to my master when she was old so notice all these are natural blessings and they were a result of what of evil endeavors no the result of evil desires no they were a result of the blessing of god notice abram was a man who followed god who obeyed god who had great faith in god and notice what god did for him god blessed him greatly greatly so when you are have, when you are following god and you are serving god god wants to do great things for you mighty things for you materially and uh, we should not be shy about that and we don't need to be shy about that why do you want to be ashamed of god's blessings hmm right eh? see if we do evil and try to get things by an evil endeavor or by sinful ways and then yeah you know it's a problem but you are following god you are serving god and god is blessing you why do we need to be ashamed of that or why do we need to put a limit on that why right look at this um hallelujah to jesus go with me to job the book of job 36 and in job 36 look, let's look at verse 11 if they obey and serve him they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures this is what god wants to do for people who love him this is god's heart this is god's desire and you will find this desire everywhere in the bible everywhere all places right if you are following god and if you are serving god god wants to bless you materially right now we will go and study spiritual blessings and desires a little later right we we will be studying that also but at this point of time i'm i'm focusing on the material part of it hey if you are following god you are serving god god wants to bless you materially he wants to prosper you he wants to increase you plain and simple it's there in the bible i i can give you scripture after scripture after scripture to prove that clear on this right 
so desiring good things is not bad desiring prosperity desiring to be well desiring to have riches and wealth is not evil it's biblical it's in the bible let me give you another scripture look at this um psalm okay before we go to psalm yeah it is psalm psalm 112 look at this praise the lord blessed is the man that fears the lord and uh, that delighteth greatly in his commandments notice this guy is a man who fears god who honors god and he is delighting greatly in the commandments of god notice what does god say he will do to him his seed his children will be mighty upon earth the generation of the upright will be blessed that's a great blessing now as fathers that's what we want to see right we want to see our children blessed we want our children to be mighty and strong right notice verse 3 wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever right wealth and riches will what will be in his house it this is a result of serving god when you are serving god god is saying i want you to have wealth i want you to have riches do you understand this right this is something god wants to do for his people right now we don't want to become servants of money we are serving god we are following god we are pursuing his will for our life right we will keep our priorities right we seek god first what does god want to do for us god is saying i want you to have wealth and riches hmm see when money is in the hands of christian wealth and riches right and his heart is set towards serving god where do you think the money will go right it will be used for good things right first of all he will no honor god with his tithe and he will support god's work through his offerings right and then he will take care of his family honor his parents help the poor right <laughs> use the money for doing good things maybe run a good business provide job opportunities for many people design good products which will bless the society you know it's it's a chain of good things when money is in the hands of the good people right it will do good money by itself is not evil money is neutral the heart condition of man is the key here if your heart is filled with good desires the money will be directed towards fulfilling the good desires if your heart is filled with evil stuff then the money will be directed towards evil and sin so money is not the problem the condition of the human heart is the question that's the key here do you understand this yeah all right keeping these thoughts in mind let's go to um first chronicles we began to study uh, this particular uh, prayer last week let's look at it again uh first chronicles chapter 4 and verse 10 this is a very famous passage in in, in uh, among christian circles most of you would know it already but let's look at it from this angle let's read from verse 9 jabez was more honorable than his brethren and his mother called his name jabez saying because i bare him with sorrow <laughs> notice that you know how would you like to have a name sorrow <laughs> terrible isn't it <laughs> right it actually means to grieve it means sorrowful when every time your mother is calling you hey sorrowful come here man grieve to grieve <laughs> right it's like calling the man grief <laughs> terrible name isn't it you don't want to keep such names to your children now nah, let me give you free advice here right if you're going to name your child pray ask god right and he will give you that's what i did for my children mine and my children we named after we spent time praying before god and receiving the name from god almighty right the holy spirit gave the names for my children and uh, so that's what you want to do because see when you are speaking the name of your child um you want to be speaking a blessing 
you want to uh, speak something into their life every time you call their names i keep telling my children don't use nicknames to call your brother you know <laughs> they make names for each other and i tell them no 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 i named you this way for a specific reason right where i want you to speak the name so that every time you open your mouth and say the name the name you know you are speaking a blessing over the person not a curse not not you know labeling people right clear on this so it would bless your children if you just wait on god and to see good names for them verse 10 job is called on the god of israel saying oh that thou would bless me indeed right thou would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast let's look at the second word enlarge my coast last week we focused on the blessing right we spoke about uh, the blessing based on jabez and um, jacob now let's look at the second thing that he is asking for he is saying god enlarge my coast in other words he wants to expand right he now he he has something already but he says i want to grow i want to increase here i want to expand i want to multiply notice god didn't say you evil jabez how can you say i want to enlarge be content with what you have <laughs> notice with god did not say that see you have to def- be uh, accurate in your understanding of contentment contentment does not mean that you know you have to same the stay the same forever being content means right eh, you are happy where you are while you are trusting god for increase right you are not murmuring and complaining about your current situation you are happy where you are right you you are thank you are thankful to god you you have gratitude for what god has done for you till now what god is doing for you today and you are believing god for you know more right is it contentment does not mean you know uh, i'm getting uh, i'm giving you a rough example right let, let, let's say your salary is 1500 just for the sake of our no, example illustration here right doesn't mean that uh, oh, okay this is my lot i'm going to have 1500 forever i'm content with what i have 1500 is all that has been given to me so i'm going to be content with the 1500 for all my life that's not contentment <laughs> do you understand that that's not godly that's not biblical do you understand this now contentment would be this is what i have now i am thankful to god that he has given me 1500 uh, i'm going to use it wisely right i'm going to honor god with my money i'm going to uh, be a blessing to people i'm going to use this money wisely i'm going to trust god to increase me that is a biblical stand do you understand that there is a interesting scripture in the bible look at uh, psalm 78 Psalm 78 Psalm 78 Verse 41 Yeah they turned back and tempted God and notice this this is a beautiful passage limited the holy one of Israel What did they do they limited the holy one of Israel can man limit God not in the overall sense right you cannot stop god one you know uh, you know if you are in a fight with him no but in your own life you can limit god in your own life because as far as your life goes god has given you the deciding authority god has you know given you the right to choose right so based on how you choose and what you desire you can limit god see god wanted to do a lot for israel right he wanted them to uh, enter into the land of canaan right canaan and win great victories right and possess the land 
enjoy the goodness of the land right god had planned mighty things for them right great things spiritually and materially but what did israel do because of their unbelief they said we cannot enter into this land and by choosing to do so they limited the holy one of israel they limited what god can do for them do you understand this see that's why i keep often keep saying this god does not work in our life according to his power god works in our life according to our desire our choices and our faith do you understand that okay the bible does not teach that god will do whatever he pleases however he pleases according to his great power no no god works in our lives according to our desires our choices and our faith that's how he functions do you understand that so if your desires are small and your expectations are really low you can limit what god can do for you let let me give you another example go with me to the book of genesis chapter 15 Genesis chapter 15 and look at Abraham here Abraham's heart's desire was great right he had a one strong desire and that great desire was he wanted a child right he wanted a son he wanted a heir he wanted someone to whom he can leave all that he has it was his heart's greatest desire nay right? and um but you know god has been speaking to him about making him a great nation great nation and uh, but he he all he was thinking about it you have not given me a son in in this particular uh, passage he actually complains to god saying you know verse 2 what will thou give me seeing i go childless eh yeah. he is saying what can you give me actually i don't have a child what's the point if i don't have a child what's the point of all the other things that's what he's saying right and the steward of my house this eli uh, steward of my house is this eliezer of damascus right and abram said behold to me thou hast given no seed lo one born in my house is my heir in other words a slave is my heir not my son right and verse four, behold the word of the lord came unto him saying this shall not be your hair but he that shall come forth out of your own bowels will be your hair and he brought him forth abroad and said look now toward heaven and tell the stars or count the stars if thou be able to number them and he said unto him so shall your seed be notice this is expansion Abraham was limiting God he he was thinking small way small notice how God expanded his thinking he said you are thinking about one child this is what i want to do for you look at those stars look at them that's what i want to do for you do you see this god is into big desires and big thinking and big expectation we will look at more these things more closely tomorrow thank you so much for listening god bless you jesus is coming soon